Mac, and 1987 cartoon TMNT figures we hope to see in 2021. Part 2, we're looking for a few good cartoon mutants. Hi everybody, welcome to Speaky Geeky. As always, I am Mr. Geeky. Today, we are going to be discussing NECA's Fred Wolf 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon toy line. If you already tuned in for part one of this series, congrats on being all caught up. And also, a big pat on the back. If you haven't, we'll conveniently plop that link in for you right here, as well as at the end of this video. So, even though the last video was only a few weeks ago, as we anticipated, there have already been some pretty huge bombshells from NECA in that time span. A few of which, also as expected, impacted this new list a bit, as there were a couple who we had already selected to talk about, and then boom, NECA went and said, here you go, Mr. Geeky, so kind of them. Since we dove into all the additional characters that have been announced or released so far for this year in the last episode, we'll just very quickly dive into who was just announced in the last couple weeks, and then dig right into our new picks. Okay, so in what we assume was probably to be in place of their usual Toy Fair reveals that was canceled this year, NECA did an offering of three straight Fridays of reveals and pre-orders for said reveals. The first week, which we touched on in the last episode, revealed the classic cartoon version Pizza Mutant, now technically in its second incarnation, as we informally had this character before by way of the 2017 San Diego Comic-Con NECA Aliens Yellow repaint, but for the very first time in its classic and cartoon accurate look. We also were able to pre-order the already released to Target two packs of Vernon and Rat King, as well as Triceraton Infantrymen and Roadkill Rodney, which was a great opportunity for collectors to finally have a chance of obtaining some of these hard to find figures. The following week, we were hit with a brand new figure reveal in Mutagen Man. This also answered the question to last episode regarding who might be paired with the fan favorited flying fowl, Ace Duck. The second week also allowed for collectors to get a chance of picking up two packs of Splinter and Baxter Stockman, as well as a Triceraton two pack of Xerax and Zork. Our very quick nerd out <laughs> moment here. There was chatter from some folks not liking the look of the Mutagen Man figure because for many, their frame of reference was largely their old action figure, which looked significantly different which, fair point, that action figure was an incredible toy, and also one of our favorites as well. However, this being a line specifically reflecting the likeness of the cartoon series, we gotta hand it to NECA. They straight up nailed Seymour Guts, down to his sad sack facial expressions. Mutagen Man gets the Mr. Geeky seal of approval, and honestly, we love the idea of having this on our shelves to add next to the Super 7 toy accurate version. Very quickly on Ace Duck, we also got to see his additional open mouth head, which helped to lend toward more of a cartoony look. And we also got a better look at those incredibly detailed wings. We like this two pack quite a bit. Yes, we know we initially thought perhaps Ace Duck would be paired with Stan Sakai's Usagi Ojimbo, but we are still really rooting for that figure to reveal and chalk that up to logistical details still likely being hammered out toward making the toy a reality. We feel it's really more a question of when rather than if he'll make it into the line. For the final week, we were treated to a doozy. In addition to giving us the chance of getting the oversized Wrath of Krang Crane, Android Suit, and Trag and Granitor, we were treated to the reveal of not one, but two new characters for pre-order, Scumbug and Anthrax. And yeah, this is gonna lead us right into one more quick nerd out moment. As it turns out, both Scumbug and Anthrax were to be on our next episode, and were going to be suggested to be paired together. So it feels especially awesome to know we were on the right track, and that NECA is on the same train of thought. Aside from the fact that these figures look like they just jumped out from the screen, with their addition, it brings us one step closer to finally getting a complete Knight of the Rogues villain gallery. This also lifts our hopes even higher for eventually getting a never-before-made figure of Tempestra, which Shell yeah, nothing announced there yet, but we assume it's only a matter of time. Now, one lingering question. That Irma figure tease we showed you last episode? We still haven't heard anything new yet or had an official announcement for when she is coming. But Irma was another character who was on our original roster for this episode. And we'll just nerd out a moment right now about her. This is one we are super psyched about for when we eventually get more details. Another big question is who will she be paired with? Vernon was paired with the Rat King, where he was able to have the pieces that transform into mutant Rat Vernon, and our bet would be that NECA will do something similar with Irma. Our best guess here is that she'll be paired either with 
Rick Bugman Bradley and come with the ability to transform into Moth Irma, or seeing as how NECA really enjoys shiny robots and TMNT has plenty to choose from, they may go a robot theme and pair Irma with Rex One with the ability for Irma to transform into the Turtle Terminator from the same title episode where <clears throat> the Turtle Terminator assumes the identity of Irma to go after the turtles. Okay, now to finally dive into the second part of this multi-video top NECA TMNT toys we want ASAP series. Join Mr. Geeky, again, that's me, as he super surfs his way through the top 40 NECA classic cartoon figures that we hope to see in 2021. So let's start with our second batch of six desired characters. Number one, Cobrato. One of the elements that excited us from the NECA TMNT line was the ability to finally see characters lovingly crafted in plastic that up until now had only been relegated to live in our imagination. Yes, well, it's true, back in the classic line that we did have another Cobra toy in the form of Scale Tail, and then technically again with Snake Karai in the 2012 toy line, we never saw the actual mutant snake from the original cartoon series in the form of Cobrato, and this was a real shame. Essentially an homage to Spider-Man's The Lizard, Cobrato had the ability to control other snakes, and like Masters of the Universe's King Hiss, his body was also made up of snake-shaped limbs, minus the snake heads on each appendage. This figure would be a fun surprise, no matter how we get him. But the idea of his body made up entirely of snakes underneath his lab coat would be incredibly interesting to see NECA pull off. And if they managed to throw in an extended neck with cobra plumage and full unhinged jaw with protruding long forked tongue, I don't think anyone would be opposed. Number two, Medusa. If you're looking to put four cold-blooded reptiles in their place, Medusa is the stone-cold mercenary you call. Medusa, a tough-as-nails alien bounty hunter hired by Lord Dreg. Don't worry, he's on one of our future lists too to jog your memory. Medusa had it all. She had exciting weapons, malleable hair, a flippin' jetpack, and to top it off, she fits firmly into the turtle's green motif. How we never got a toy of her while the show was airing is beyond logic, but now is as good a time as any to make up for lost time. Number three, Irma. Anyone who collects NECA certainly already knows and appreciates that when the company dives into a property, they really dive in. There is a mutual understanding that they know we have an affinity for the farthest reaches of the line, and the love and craft that goes into the details shows us they do too. By way of supporting characters, we saw this first with Vernon. Not only did they deliver, but they went the extra mile, pairing him with Rat King and throwing in his mutant rat appearance to give us the ability to display him episode specific. Irma happens to be one of these lovable supporting characters that in the past always seemed to draw the short straw on plastic love. On some levels, we get it. She isn't a mutant, she doesn't have any special weapons, but what she did have going for her was that she was easily recognizable from being heavily featured in the episodes, had a ton of different iterations. As we mentioned earlier, Moth Irma, Turtle Terminator, and also Super Irma to name just a few, but she only ever had one figure of her created. And the one they did make in the Cartoon Turtles wave of the classic line ended up looking nothing like her appearance on the show. With her classic baggy shirt, thick rimmed glasses, high rise socks, and orthopedic brown shoes, Irma feels like the quintessential product of the 80s. Her wealth of anxiety played off of April's go capture the story wherever it may be attitude to act as a perfect foil. She was the Barb from Stranger Things before Barb was ever strange or Stranger Things was a thing. As exciting as it will be to get a full gallery of essential mutants, the notion of getting characters like Irma are equally thrilling. And as far as supporting characters go, Irma tops that list. Okay, so as some keen viewers may have noticed, this one was kind of a cheat considering we now already know Irma's coming. But again, we don't yet know the full scope of which versions of Irma we will see or who she will be paired with. One Easter egg that seems 
appropriate to point out as a possible pairing. And we want to be clear, this is pure speculation on our part, is that the punk frogs were teased with one of Dirk Savage mutant hunters' infamous mutant traps. Now, we have no idea if this is the pairing we'll be treated to, but if they were working on accessories for that character, and those happened to be done before the character itself, adding it to the punk frogs might have been a sly way to prepare us for that reveal without entirely tipping us off. Which brings us to, well, ain't that a kick in the shell? It's none other than, yep, you guessed it, number four. Dirk Savage, Mutant Hunter. Dirk is to the turtles as Elmer Fudd is to Bugs Bunny. Very much also a product of the 80s, he felt like he had inspired hints of Dirty Harry meets Terminator. Unlike Elmer, however, this dude was rightly feared in the mutant community for his mutant phobic rhetoric and shoot first and ask questions never outlook on handling them. This baddie left no stone unturned and no weapon unused in his pursuit of hunting mutants, both hero and villain alike. Doing a double take on this character, we partly wonder if he may have been the inspiration for the classic toy Monty Moose, who ironically shared a similar attitude towards mutants on his card back, but who was identified as an ally to the turtles as a toy. A stray thought we immediately have, if we are correct, and this character ends up being made soon, is that we'd wager cartoon series versions of Toka and Razar may be coming sooner than later as well, as both appeared in the Dirk Savage Mutant Hunter episode as well. More on those two very soon. Number five and number six, Brown Chuck and Dirtbag. First appearing in the fifth season's Planet of the Turtleoids, the mutant mole dirtbag and quasi-Terminator inspired bull compatriot Brown Chuck were instant fan favorites. This episode seemed to revolve a bit around the release of their toy counterparts, largely as a way to give the audience some origin background on where these new mutants came from. They did have a bit more sophistication than Bebop and Rocksteady, and if not for Bebop and Rocksteady bungling which animals were meant to get the mutagen treatment, we may have seen two very different mutants in the form of a gorilla and a lion, perhaps a nod to the eventually produced toys, Sergeant Bananas and King Lionheart. Though, if that truly was the case, considering the costumes Shredder conveniently had at the ready and doled out from his toolbox, those mutants may have featured names closer to Cygor and Rory Rock Quarry. Jumping back into King Lionheart's background for just a moment, we have a sneaking suspicion that this character's origin may have, in actuality, been based loosely on Eastman and Laird's TMNT and other strangeness character, Louisa Dotto. But back to the characters at hand. Both Dirtbag and Groundchuck felt like a breath of fresh air for viewers who were tired of seeing Bebop and Rocksteady's constant and capable buffoonery, and felt like somewhat capable henchmen who might actually be able to follow through on tasks for Shredder or Krang. The A-team to Bebop and Rocksteady's perpetual pinky and the pinky, as it were. They helped to inject new personalities into Shredder's acolytes that honestly didn't get near as much screen time as they probably should have. On the toy front, it might be fun to have their costumes completely removable so we could also display them how they first appeared, and this would also give collectors the opportunity to throw these same costumes onto concept image figures of a gorilla and lion, if these are also ever released. Wink, wink, NECA. Wink. Wink. Well, there it is. That concludes part two of our top hopes for the 2021 NECA Fred Wolf animated series. But part three will be dropping any day now. So make sure to stay tuned to Speaky Geeky's YouTube for more dedicated turtle time. We imagine you'll have some characters at the top of your list too. So feel free to join the conversation in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure to sub up, give the video a like, and share with anyone you know who appreciates these types of videos. Also, make sure to check out the description for some other links that lead to some similar expanded content we think you'll also probably dig quite a bit. We realize you could have gone anywhere and you chose to nerd out with us, and we appreciate that. So, as always, I am Mr. Geeky, and until next week, Turtle Speaky, keep it geeky, folks.